Hello and welcome to Super Great Kids Stories. Wise tales from storytellers around the world which will make you laugh and sometimes cry. Recommended for ages 5 to 105. I'm Kim and I love stories. Hello Super Great Kids and how are you? I'm very happy because the storytelling festival season has begun and it feels like summer in the UK. Oh, and there's an owl which hoots in the woods near my house every evening. And today we have a story which is both a how and why and a trickster story called Why a Nancy Has Long Skinny Legs. And it's told by talented storyteller Emily Hennessy. Now, just before we hear from Emily, I wonder how many are Nancy stories you can name. Well, we've had about 15 on our podcast so far, so see how many you can remember. Ready? Off you go. Hello, super great kids, I'm back. How many of Nancy's stories did you come up with? There's, are you ready? The Tree with the Face, The Drum of Common Sense, The Chest of Stories, Hot Pepper Soup, Mrs Chicken, The Party, The Turtle, The Magic Pot, Tiger Fat, How Are Nancy's Stories Got Their Name, The Birds, Magic Yams, Number Five, The Unknown Challenge, and of course, a Nancy and the Hot Pepper Soup. Well done if you got more than five. And super great if you got more than ten. Are you sitting comfortably? Am I sitting comfortably? Then it's time for our story. Let the story begin. Here's Emily. Hello, my name is Emily and I want to tell you a story all about a spider. A spider who is a real trickster. Maybe you've heard of this trickster spider. Maybe you know that his name is Anansi. Being a spider, Anansi has eight legs. Eight long, spindly legs. But his legs weren't always long and thin. They used to be short. In those days, Anansi was really greedy. He loved food especially when someone else had made the effort of cooking it, because he was also very lazy. Funny day, and Nancy was walking along near the river. When? Oh, he smelt something really good. A delicious smell in the air. And that smell was coming from Rabbit's house. Hello! What are you cooking that smells so good? Oh, hello, Anansi. I'm cooking green beans for lunch. Would you like to stay and have some? Mmm, I love green beans. Yes, please, said Anansi. Well, then come on in. They'll be ready very soon, and while we wait, you can help me to lay the table. Do you think... Lazy Anansi wanted to help Rabbit to lay the table. <laughs> no, of course he didn't. But as always, Anansi had a trick up his sleeve. I would love to help you lay the table, Rabbit, but oh, I've just remembered there's something really important I need to go and do. I won't be long, and when lunch is ready, you can let me know. Anansi quickly spun a thread. He tied one end of the thread to the cooking pot and the other end around one of his eight short legs. Just tug on the thread when it's time to eat. I'll feel the thread pull my leg and come straight back. Anansi scurried out of Rabbit's house, back out into the sunshine and carried on walking. He walked and he walked until... <laughs> Oh, there was a smell in the air. Oh, 
a really delicious smell. Oh, and this lovely smell was coming from Monkey's house. Hello, Monkey! What are you cooking that smells so good? Oh, hello, Anansi. I'm cooking sweet potato for lunch. Would you like to stay and have some? Oh, I would love to, said Anansi, and in he went. Oh, well, uh, they'll be ready very soon, and while we wait, you can help me to lay the table. But Anansi didn't want to lay the table. I've just remembered something really important I need to quickly go and do. I won't be long. He spun another thread. He tied one end of the thread to the sweet potato pot and the other around one of his legs. When lunch is ready, just tug on the thread and I'll come right back. Anansi scurried out of Monkey's house, out into the sunshine and carried on walking. And he walked and he walked until... <gasps> there was another smell in the air. Oh, a really delicious smell. And this lovely smell was coming from Tiger's house. Hello, Tiger! What are you cooking that smells so good? Oh, hello, Anansi. I'm cooking aubergine for lunch. Would you like to stay and have some? Mmm, I love aubergine. Yes, please, said Anansi. And so in he went. Lunch will be ready very soon, and while we wait, you can help me to lay the table. But Anansi didn't want to lay the table. I've just remembered something really, really, really important. I quickly need to go and do. Oh, I won't be long. He spun another thread. He tied one end around the aubergine pot and the other around one of his legs. When lunch is ready, just tug on the thread and I'll come right back. And Nancy scurried out of Tiger's house, out into the sunshine, and he walked until <laughs> another delicious smell. Oh, and this smell was coming from Lizard's house, and Lizard was cooking pumpkin. And Nancy was invited in. But when Lizard asked him to lay the table, well, he tied another thread around the pot and around one of his legs. Just pull when it's ready! And off he went. The same happened at Elephant's house, and Turtle's, and Zebra's, and Parrot's house too. Until finally, Anansi had threads tied around all of his eight legs, all attached to pots cooking something delicious. Back at Rabbit's house, the table was laid and the beans were ready. So Rabbit tugged at the thread. Oh, Anansi felt the pull and headed towards Rabbit's house. But then, Monkey pulled the thread because the sweet potato was ready. And then Tiger pulled, and Lizard, and Elephant, and Turtle, and Zebra, and Parrot, and eight lunches were all ready. Eight threads tugging and Nancy's eight legs. And Nancy was pulled this way, and that way, and forwards, and backwards, and left, and right. When Nancy didn't arrive at Rabbit's house, he pulled harder. And so did Monkey. And so did Tiger. All the animals yanked and tugged on the threads, pulling Anansi's legs so hard in different directions that his legs began to stretch, getting longer and longer, thinner and thinner. And then, finally, all the threads snapped. And Nancy went flying through the air and landed in the river with a splash. When Nancy climbed out of the river, he was wet, cold and hungry. There was no lunch for Anansi that day. And from that day on, Anansi's eight legs remained long and spindly. And 
Whenever Anansi was invited to lunch, he always helped to lay the table. Thank you so much, Emily, for that story. Imagine having a spider like Anansi living in your house. I bet he doesn't make his bed. That would make a fun story for you to learn to tell yourself. Imagine how thrilled your grown-ups would be to be given a story told by you as a present. Maybe you could send us a picture of Anansi with his long, thin legs being pulled in different directions by his animal friends. Send your pictures to Story Owl via our Facebook page, facebook.com forward slash supergreatkidsstories or via our website, supergreatkidsstories.com. Now, it's time to say hello to some new owlets. Woo hoo 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 and a happy hoot to the Yabra family in Bozeman in Montana in the US. Hello to Alyssa, who is seven, and to her brothers Nico, who is almost five, and Micah, who is almost two. Alyssa's favourite story is Gulbahar, the Persian Rapunzel, and Anansi and the Unknown Challenge. And Nico's favourite story is The Ghost of the Bloody Finger. And Micah's favourite story is Baba Yaga and Little Brother. And hello to Sienna from San Francisco, California, who recently turned five. Sienna says she can't choose a favourite story because she loves all of them. And she recently binge listened for a four-hour car ride. Sienna is a bit of a storyteller herself, specialising in telling stories about cats with superpowers. Good for you, Sienna. Happy telling. Let's fly down to Texas next to say hello to Lorraine, who is very nearly seven. Her favourite story is The Ghost of the Bloody Finger. Welcome to the club, Lorraine. Over to Cold Spring in New York next to say hello to Owlets Iris and Simon. Simon is ten and loves Hey Ho. And Iris is six and also loves Hey Ho and how the phoenix got its bright feathers. Iris and Simon would also like us to say hello to Olive the Owl and Mr Cheesy, their favourite owls. <laughs> and across to Spokane in Washington next to say hello to nine-year-old Mitchell, who's been listening to the stories with his grandma Gigi for two years. Their favourite stories are all of the ones with Anansi, and they look forward to listening together every day. Hope you enjoyed today's Anansi story, Mitchell. And now, let's flip-flap fly down to Texas to say hello to Sofia. She is a Brazilian-Bulgarian-Canadian-Spanish-American seven-year-old living in Houston. Wow, lucky you, having all those connections with different parts of the world. Sofia's all-time favourite story is... You've guessed it, the ghost of the bloody finger. And she listens to the super great kids stories every night. Happy listening, Sophia. Hello and welcome now to Sienna Rose, who is six and lives in South Orange in New Jersey. Her favourites are the Anansi stories and the hairy toe. She loves listening with her papa in the car. And a big hoot and hello to Sophie, who is nine, and Julia, who is seven, from Lake Forest, California. Their favourite episodes are Cap of Rushes and River Mama. Your mum tells us that you're going to Spain this summer and she hopes you have a wonderful trip. Ooh, what fun going to Spain. Buen viaje! And let's fly across to the Sunshine Coast in Queensland, Australia now to say hello to Birdie, who will be turning four in June. She lives with her mama, papa and baby brother Cosmo. And her favourite stories are The Hairy Toe and Baba Yaga. 
And staying in Australia, let's fly down to Ballarat in Victoria to say hello to Billy, who is six. He listens to the stories before bed and his favourite story at the moment is the Danish story, Hey Ho. Yep, that is a good one, Billy. And did you all guess the answer to Daniel Morden's riddle story for subscribers at the end of April? I wonder who got it right. And let's scoot across to Banbury in the UK now. Do owls scoot as well as hoot? And say hello to Maddie, who is seven, nearly eight, and Finley, who is six. They especially love the scary stories and anything by Toop. Welcome to the club. And welcome to everyone who's joined the Owlets Club. Keep telling your stories and singing your songs. More Owlet welcomes next week. And you've been sending in brilliant pictures recently. Our pick this week goes to superfan Kaylee, who is six, for her witty picture of the Japanese story, The Kind Badges. What I especially like is the husband and wife bowing very low to one of the wrestlers and turning their heads to the audience and grinning. And Kaylee sent us a picture of a phoenix singing for joy with some fluffy feathers stuck onto the picture to illustrate the Chinese story, How the Phoenix Got Her Bright Feathers. If you'd like to see all the beautiful super great pictures sent in this week, go to facebook.com forward slash super great kids stories. And thanks very much to all of you who are subscribing to our podcast. We couldn't manage without your support. If you'd like to support us on Apple Podcasts or on Patreon, we'll say hello to you on the programme and you can hear our stories advert free and you'll get over 38 bonus stories and at least 22 super great scary stories. For more information, go to our website at supergreatkidsstories.com. Remember to keep telling your stories, singing your songs and sharing them with your friends. This podcast was produced at Wardour Studios in fabulous Fitzrovia in London.